we expect that level of volatility. We've increased our diversification in the plan. I'd like to reduce the amount of assets that we have that are daily traded, publicly traded, uh, but we're, it's tough to find private investments in this environment. We've got to get out of the health crisis before we can put more into private investments. But you hit it on the head. We're an investor. We're not a trader. And this market is all about momentum right now. What do you think is ultimately behind it? We've talked a lot about the options market. We've talked a lot about free trading, the return of the retail investor. What do you and your team believe is behind this sort of violent multi-day sell-off? Well, the short-term sell-off is, is uh, the momentum from having the top stocks hit ridiculous valuations. I mean, Tesla has just been the, the ultimate story of one company worth more than almost the entire industry combined. That's crazy. And that's when people wake up and then the crowd rushes back the other direction. Technical analysis, good solid fundamental analysis, they're out the window. It's all about just momentum and trading because there are so many people like us that are at home and have time to be watching the markets. And now that trading is absolutely free, people are in and out like crazy. Uh, and it's just a time where a long-term investor wants to stand back have your asset allocation, let this market be volatile and just rebalance at, at different points in the time. You mentioned Tesla, obviously, Chris, but some of the other companies, Apple, Microsoft, big, steady names, good, solid companies with high free cash flows. Do you think their valuations also got ridiculous, to use your word? Well, uh, you hit it on the head. These are good, solid, they're real companies, but yes, their valuations got way ahead of where they are uh, and where they stand. Uh, there's no resemblance to a price earnings ratio on any of these uh, companies. And the, the shift between value and growth is at the 99th, 100th percentile. These are extreme times. It really does feel like 1999. Now, we don't have the crazies of 1999, but the valuations in those names are just out of, out of whack with the reality of the, where we are in the world and the market. Well, also what doomed us in 99, and unfortunately, Chris, both you and I were, were doing what we're doing <laughs> now then, was you also had a lot of fake companies. Let's be honest, companies at the time that, that really had no point of being and ultimately went away. Do you think it's similar in that way with the SPAC frenzy? I'm getting concerned about that, but I don't think that's at the extreme levels. I, I think that's going to end up being some competition a little bit in the private equity market, but uh, not for long term. This is going to be controversial, but I really think that, frankly, what we're seeing is a lot of, of uh, false traders, tons of day traders who have real jobs and will go back to them in the office at some point and stop doing all the day trading and really driving this market in this crazy momentum trade. Uh, it's just evaluations that don't make sense with the reality that we see in the street, uh, the reality we see around the world. And that's gonna take until probably the early spring of 21. I don't know if it's controversial, but I will say this, people moaned about the retail investor leaving the market. Now apparently people are moaning about the retail investor being back in the market, right? I mean, it, they, they do add value in many ways, but also many of them, maybe I, hopefully not, but are, are getting hurt today. I like investors. I'm not fond of traders, nothing against them. It's a nice occupation if you wanna try it, but traders by nature are in and out of the stock quickly. They're not holding it for the long term. They're just looking for price moves. And traders, while there's some value to price discovery, really don't add value to us as long-term investors. We're gonna hold these stocks for 10 and 20 years so therefore, we're looking for meaningful ownership and at realistic price valuations. Uh, look at the value stocks. I mean, they're in the dumps. Small cap value is at ridiculously cheap levels. Uh, in emerging market stocks, ridiculously cheap levels, but they could stay there for months and months and months. And so one thing I tweeted out on Monday, Chris, or Tuesday rather, which was maybe the upside to the downside is that the selling of all the tech stocks is gonna free up a lot of cash. Do you think that cash will be put to work perhaps on the hundreds or thousands of other companies that have been ignored? To your point, small cap value names. At one point, I think it was early last week, the Apple was worth more than the entire Russell 2000 combined. Well, that would be logical. And I don't think we're seeing any logic in this market. 
uh, these traders follow momentum. I mean, we can go back and look at the beginning of this, uh, the story on Hertz and some of the other stocks that just run with abandon for no logical reason. So I don't think we're going to see logic in this market, frankly, until we see a vaccine and a widely spread vaccine so that we can say the health crisis is over. Even then, no one's going to jump back to life as normal yeah. right away. Who's going to get on a plane immediately and fly around? So it's going to be a slow recovery. And then I think we'll see some reality come back to this market where valuations mean something. Doesn't mean the stay-at-home stocks will be hammered right away. Those companies, as you've said, they've made value. But I think a lot of people are getting tired of just sitting at home and watching the same stuff on the same channels. They're very interested in getting out and having a life. Uh, and when this health crisis is over, we'll resort back to that. And the value stocks will come back. Yeah, and it, and it will be over. History has showed us that. Pandemics figure themselves out, either scientifically or just over time on, on their own. Well, hopefully it will be sooner than later, Chris. So have you been, a, have you been, a, a, you're not a buyer, I get it, because you're always an owner. You guys own everything, literally every asset class. Have you been upping your allocation a little bit to smaller names? We have been taking profits, just shaving profits is the way I would describe it, Brian, when this market gets overextended. We get over our allocation, take a little bit off the top, redistribute it. As, as I said, we're interested in private assets. There's not a lot of opportunity out there. So we're sitting back and waiting but we're gonna diversify the portfolio more. Uh, in terms of small cap versus large cap, because we own the market, we are a buyer of the small cap names, but we're equally in the large cap. We're not gonna overweight small cap. Okay, very quickly, I'll wrap it up with this. I know that COVID is obviously the biggest health risk. We all want that to be gone, but from a pure market perspective, is a contested election the biggest risk? I think it is because the market's really not paying attention to it. The market won't pay attention to the election until we start getting into October. And that's mostly gonna be about what uh, policies versus which party is in power. I'm frankly really worried about a contested US election. This is like 2000 where we're not actually gonna know the result, even uh, the first week of November, maybe even the second and third week. And then if nobody concedes, we may end up with the first non-peaceful transition of power. And that's mm. it's not in the market right now. And that's a scary picture. 